Praise the Lord, dear friend. Thomas Manton IV here, coming to you live with some words about the call of God and the will of God. I was pondering some moments ago about the awesome call of God, how phenomenal it is, how amazing it is, how absolutely splendiferous it is, how magnanimous the things are that God wants to do in the earth. And, I, and then I was thinking about, about how amazing it is that God can use a voice, a ministry, a man, a person to change the destiny, literally, of multiplied nations, millions of people's lives, destiny brought into fruition, new things being created that were never there before. God said, I formed the world with my voice, with my mouth, with the words that I speak, and then what I created, I called it good. And then he said, before things were, Seen, I have already made them and created them. One example was Jesus was with his disciples and he passed by a fig tree that had no fruit. Now I'm going to get into this in a minute because this is an important point. A fig tree that had no fruit. And he cursed it and said, I'm taking away your opportunity to flourish. And the disciples probably talked to each other and said, uh, Maybe the grape juice we were drinking fermented a bit, and Jesus, maybe he's uh, having a moment. But then they were astonished when they walked back past the same tree, and the tree was dead and withered up because he spoke to it. So everything can be created or uncreated by um, the voice of God. Now, a little admonition I want to say about that is the call of God and the will of God is beyond important for you to be obedient. If you don't obey God, woe is you. Paul said, woe unto me if I don't preach the gospel, because he was called to preach the gospel. And the Lord is serious about you and me obeying his will and his word. You know, I found a scripture in Proverbs 6 in my big, huge Dake's Bible. I don't know if I can hold it up here without messing up the set. Okay, I'm going to try. This thing is so heavy you could break windows with it. This date here, look, look, look how thick that is. It's huge. You see how huge that is? This is the book here. This is the law. And in Proverbs uh, chapter 6, uh, I like this. It's huge. It's, it's one got all the notes in it, all the, you know, all the footnotes and whatever they call those concordances and analysis and it has the right column which gives uh you know scriptures and teachings which is really great i wish it was a little bit of a bigger font but when you get close enough to it you can read it but in proverbs chapter 6 he said my son and then i want to jump proverbs chapter 6 verse 20 is that right let me see the chapter this thing has how many yeah six he said uh in verse 23, the commandment is a lamp, and the law is light, Woo! and reproofs of instruction are the way of life, but they also give the way of life, to deliver thee from all kinds of stagnancy. Now, the scripture talks here about certain people, certain situations, but really, Base basically what you're doing in your life, you know. And if you're not, so the commandment is a lamp and the law is light. The commandment of God is a lamp and the, and the law of God is light. So if you want to, uh, that was worth the exercise, holding that up. By the way, I have a testimony. I've lost about 30 pounds almost. And I am 
Can't show you under the garment here, but uh, man, it's really, hmm. And I started working out again. My muscles are, are coming back into place very strong. I don't know if you can kind of feel the vibe of this. I feel energy. I've been waking up like lightning in the morning, early in the morning, can't sleep. Really, the day starts at 8 o'clock anyway, or earlier for some people. I never quite understood these 5 a.m. people, but God bless you if you're there, but not all of us, you know. Us nocturnal creatures, you know, preachers <laughs> who had night revivals all the time, but then you change your lifestyle a bit, eat earlier, drink a lot of water, get a lot healthier, uh, lose weight, get trim and fit. You know, your energy is there and you can just work, you know, so many hours a day and uh, morning, noon and night. I wanted to do a broadcast this afternoon from the capital city where I am right now. And uh, I just didn't feel, I may do it tomorrow, I may do it in another day, but I just didn't feel, uh, you know, okay about it. The, the vibe of the, of the chaos in the city was so thick. I just was like, you know, not now, I, I just will do it another time. And then here, when I got back to my palace here, I just thought, let me set the, the stage a little bit and uh, try to get the lighting right. I have so many kind of indirect lightings here. Indirect. I have beautiful lamp. I wish I could show you. Maybe I'll take a photo and post it later. Uh, I can't turn to it right now. But And, you know, it's just all there, and I was able to get it just right. So thank God for his blessings. Beautiful places, beautiful life, you know, beautiful everything. Praise the Lord. And that's the will of God. I've been teaching about that, but I'm not talking about that right now. The will of God is for you to be blessed, to be healthy, to be strong, to be able to do so many things. But I'm amazed at the voice of God, getting back to the topic here, the voice of God that changes nations. That's what I want to call this. The voice of God that transforms nations, shakes nations, builds nations, does things for millions of people, that things that have never happened before. I... Uh, in, in the nation of Kenya, just as one example, and all my Kenyan friends, God bless you. I want people from Kenya to begin to reach out to me. I felt that today. I wanted to say that. I want you to begin to private inbox me. If you're from Kenya, send me a private inbox. I command you in Jesus' name. <laughs> say that in a friendly way, but I mean it. There's a reason for it, because I have a lot of new uh, prophetic releases for the nation of Kenya right now. If you're Kenyan anywhere in the world and you're hearing this voice somehow, I want you to private inbox me, Thomas Manton, on Facebook. And the way you get there is www.facebook.com forward sign Thomas Manton. That's it. T-H-O-M-A-S-M-A-N-T-O-N. Facebook.com forward sign Thomas Manton. Send me a messenger. A private inbox. If you'd rather use WhatsApp, you can do it on plus two five four seven nine two three two zero seven eight zero. That number works for WhatsApp and for M-Pesa, which you know if you're in Kenya what it is if you'd like to sow a love gift into the work of the Lord to our missions projects here. Very much appreciated, and I will be praying for you as you do that the blessings of heaven to overtake you. Miracles happen for people that connect with me. Financial increases and breakthroughs happen that, for people that connect with the anointing. It's just phenomenal. I'll tell some testimonies about that uh, also. Now, I want to, uh, so I want to hear from you, all right? And I have some new prophetic releases, something special that's going to come out tomorrow or by latest the next day, a new release for the nation of Kenya prophetically, which is phenomenal. I want to talk about the voice of God for a minute. Sunday morning, I spoke, and in, within 24 hours, the prof, one of the prophecies I delivered there came to pass in a very big way. Uh, and I'll get back to that. Now, and, and this is something I'm going to release to people from the nation of Kenya. Now, the Lord is uh, reminding me about how we prophesied about superhighways being built in Kenya. Then the trains would come, but not before the roads. After the road development's really kicking in, then there's going to be a massive train line that's going to be done. And this has happened. Uh, uh, the, the, the SGR train line has been developed, train, whatever you want to call it, uh, networks of rails. And it's uh, for really modern 
train traffic. They're even talking about having a luxury train, you know, uh, you know, training, how do you say, flying, not flying, flying in the air, I mean, flying on the rail across the country that people can just get everywhere. You know, it's amazing. Uh, I'm reminded of a prophecy that I delivered that from Nairobi, there would be a nonstop flight going to the south coast. And sure enough, an, uh, uh, an airport was built in Ukunda, which is on the south coast, a beautiful place, beautiful beaches uh, where you have Diani Beach and uh, some of that. And, and I was there and I thought, wow, because you go through Mombasa and then you have to take the ferry over to the other side and drive down. It's, it, it was really grueling to do that. And some of you that done that trip, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, so to fly direct, now there are direct flights going everywhere. You could fly to Malindi, you could fly to Kilifi, near Kilifi, outside of Kilifi, about a 30 minute, 40 minute drive to uh, this place where they have the bioluminescent water, the water that glows at night because of a certain kind of plankton. I mean, it's just phenomenal. And uh, uh, Machacos, when there was only like one lane road, now they built the dual carriageway, hot little highway. And then going in there, the Lord spoke about development there. And this is back in 2007, but look at now. That was 12 years ago. Now it's a different place. I mean, it's coming up. And there's a city being built there. And I prophesied that there would be a city built in the Machacos County area that would be a phenomenon. And now the Kanza City is coming up, which is a technical, a tech city being built. Another one happened. I said there's another city that's going to be built outside of Nairobi and Tattoo City is now being built over there. And they're building new roads everywhere. There's a road that goes now from Westlands all the way to Gigiri where the UN is straight. It's called the Red Hill and I got to drive on that. It's phenomenal. I was almost weeping that the presence of God as I was going came in <laughs> came into uh, my, 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 I call it my mobile office, my, 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 I have a customized vehicle, I just have it like an office, and it's really comfortable, really beautiful, double sunroof, and we can go take pictures of animals and all that, I've done that, I was, I was riding it, and the Lord, the presence of God came in and said, son, I had you speak this into existence, and people from the UN, from the United Nations uh, offices there were telling me, uh, thank you. They had te tears in their eyes. Thank you for praying, for prophesying this road. It's so easy for us to get where we are, like in Lavington or Karen, out that way to come down and to there and just shoot across on this highway straight to the village market, if you know that, and to the UN and two rivers and all that. And... It wasn't there before. You'd have to go through all these roads. Another phenomenon, the, 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 the Westlands thing. Years ago, a few, even just a few short years ago, you remember it was full of these sheet metal, iron sheet, you know, little kiosk things, you know, with a lot of witchcraft going on, a lot of stuff for business and, you know, rituals and idolatry and all that, you know, all that kind of stuff. They say bat, I, I saw them with my eyes one time. They said, look at that thing flying around the light. I said, what is that? A bunch of things. It was a whole herd of bats, you know, like a, a bunch of bats, lots of them, like hundreds of them, a thousand, fly, hundred, probably hundreds of them, flying around in a circle above those things, and they go and nest in there. It was because of the witchcraft. And I, and I got mad, and I looked at it, and I got grieved in my spirit, and I said, Lord, this is not right. This is supposed to be a beautiful town and a developed place, right? And he said, yes, prophesy. And it was God that gave me the thought, and I began to speak. And I said, these will all be taken out. And there was a fight over that. They fought. I mean, it was violence, and there was clashes with the city, the government, and um, the people there. But they said, no, we have to take these out of here because we're going to build a beautiful roundabout with... Uh, thing and make the road and now guess what today right now this week the last it was really messed up you know remember you'd have to go around it was all dirt it was all broken up traffic was horrible but guess what just this week now the the 
end of September. The, um, the thing was done, and now you can fly right through there on a brand new paved road. I was like, God, I remember when this was a mess, full of holes, couldn't drive through hardly. Those things, traffic backed up all the way. No good road to drive on, but now it's beautiful. And outside the buildings, I wonder, yes, I do have it. This is amazing. I'm just, I'm just going spontaneously here and I'm getting, this is wonderful. Let me show you something. Let me show you something. Watch this. Can I find it? Can I find it? Yes, I can. Woohoo! Here's my mobile office. Okay, that's one. All right. Quick, 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 quick. Now look at this. This is the this is the view, if you can see it. And it's kind of not a great photo. It was at night out of a window. But this is the view of what used to be like iron sheet, curio shops, whatever. This is the, the buildings that have been built in a brand new hotel. Okay, look at that. Does that look like a, a third world, you know, slapped together? Dusty road, local, small, impoverished thing, or does that look like, that looks like the development of a major city, and it is. Look at this. Here it is again. A little bit of a bigger scene there. But you, oh. yeah. Look at that. I, I know it's not that clear, but you can see that? These, these buildings that you're seeing are all new. And this is in Westlands in Nairobi, Kenya. Never was like that before. This country, Kenya, is being absolutely revolutionized from the ground up, from the bottom up, from the top down. Next point, God is really attacking the corrupt practices of, of evildoers. That mess has got to be kicked out. And people are reminding me of the prophecy I gave way back in, they were in meetings, they remember, in 2007. And... Um, 2007 and 2008, and they said, I remember you said, man of God, prophet of God, that corruption in the future before the next generation will become a thing of the past. It is happening, and people keep slipping through the cracks, as I've said, but the movement is on. There's an anti-corruption movement in the nation of Kenya from heaven. Let me tell you, boy, oh boy. Dusty Rose, take me home to the place I belong. Then I was John Denver's on West Virginia. No, I'm not coming to West Virginia right now. God Almighty, I'm trying to get this here. Okay. One of my custom African love the fabric. See the shine on that? Isn't that beautiful? Like chocolate brown. Isn't that, isn't that, isn't that great? The gold embroidery here. Okay, now another town, Chuka in Kenya. Chuka, which is out past uh, Embu. On the way to Meru, there's a little town called Chuka. C-H-U-K-A. It's a, it's a um, old colonial town, about 110 years old. And dirt roads everywhere. Dirt roads everywhere. Now, only paved road is the road that goes through the, that, that, that takes you through the town. But when you turn off any which way, it's all dirt, it was always dirt roads. And you know, the local government, some of the local government people were so twisted up that they're fighting each other because they're jealous that one politician might get the money in their hands to, you know, whatever with. And all of these uh, consignments of money to build the roads. A civil servant shouldn't strive for himself. He should be striving, and this is the word of the Lord. Now I'm speaking the prophetic righteousness here. The, a civil servant should be looking to get the development of the place that's good for the people, not something that's good for their own pocket that they're trying to steal. So I was there having a meeting. We had a pastor's gathering. There was, the place was packed. I don't know how many hundreds of pastors were there. And people from all the major churches, they all came together. And even the hotel we stayed at was pretty rough, and I think they said it was owned by a, one of the MPs, you know, figures, right? Where'd they get the money from? <laughs> anyway, moving right along. 
Mm -hmm. Might not have had that money before they got into their thing, but you know, you can just read between the lines on that. But anyway, just having a conversation here. I'm not point, I'm not throwing any any javelins, but anyway. The Lord had me prophesy that they would build again a beautiful roundabout with a, like a monumental monument kind of thing, fountain, and all the roads would begin to be developed. New buildings would come up, new businesses would spring up, there's universities there, they would be expanded, and they'd be like a little, they'd be like become like a business town of new development. Do you know what happened? Some things don't take years to come to pass. Some do. Some prophecies, like the superhighway, I said it in 07, it began to be developed. And uh, I don't know how many years later, the, the Thika superhighway was put in, a superhighway in Kenya. Can you imagine that? They begin to put traffic lights on Kenyatta Avenue. Never was there before. Dirt roads now became highways. All these... Um, I don't know what they call them, ring roads and uh, bypasses, yeah. We have like a new highway, go a certain place to cut through so people don't get stuck in the little local roads. Happening everywhere. So Chuka Town, um, seven days, it was on a Friday, that I prophesied that, that the place would be developed. And God wanted roads to be there. People started shouting, you know, crying. Oh, my God. Oh, this is powerful. And the anointing was so strong. I mean, it was, that was really why, what made people get emotional is the, the tangible presence of God, not just the word alone. And seven days later, President Kenyatta went with Deputy President William Ruto and uh, a couple of other people. And the president got a puzzled look on his face, they told me. And this was in the news media. This is on film. And reported the news. And he said, I don't know what's going on here, but I'm going to take this onto my desk myself to see that things begin to change and get developed here. And he said, usually it's the local government that's supposed to do all this, but I feel there's just been too much delay, too much fighting, too much wrangling. And uh, I'm, I'm going to get something done about it. And the thing began... And people are writing me back from then saying, man of God, you prophesied this while you were here. We were amazed to hear the word, rejoicing over it. And now it is actually happening. Amazing. You look at the building of buildings, new hotels, new skyscrapers. They're like almost little skyscrapers. Some have gone up to, I think, 36 40, and 40 stories high. This is in Africa now. And people think Africa, wow, is that like the wild out in the bush with the lions and the zebras and the giraffes and the elephants and, and some people around with little houses that they made with their hands? No, 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 no. It's become, this place is becoming a major metropolis, Nairobi. It's, it's, it's a phenomenon. But God can use a man to prophesy. I want to tell you, many prophecies come through, through people that were, are, uh, call themselves prophets and others that people would consider to be prophets, and some that truly are prophetic, and some others that are pathetic, not prophetic, but some that are prophetic for real, and but, you know, to a degree. But, but we haven't heard any man alive in our generation or at any time that would speak about a specific city and town and say what would happen there about development and then it begin to happen. Look far and wide, all your pastors, apostles, and leaders, and see if you can find such specific, definite, amazing prophetic words like that coming through a vessel anointed by God to speak such specific things like that. And then watch the miracles unfold before the eyes of millions of people and even people around the entire world to behold this phenomenon of God using a creative voice to speak things into existence. Now, I have to say, this is the plan of God. It's the Lord doing it himself through a vessel, through a voice, but it's, it was really the obedience to say yes to the call and yes to the thing where God could manifest himself through someone because he said, surely 
I'll do nothing except I first reveal my secret to my servant, the prophets. Until I, until I speak to a prophet, I look for an intercessor. I look for a man to stand in the gap, Ezekiel 22, 30. I look for the prophet who I can raise up, Amos 3, 7. I look to a prophet, to, uh, for a prophet, then come to a prophet, and then move through a prophet that I've ordained, says the Lord. And like, it's, like I said in, had said in, in Hosea 12, 13, where by a prophet, people were led out of the wilderness and into the promised land. I had Joshua speak, and the sun stayed still. I had Joshua command the people prophetically to march around the city and then shout on the last day and the walls of Jericho fell down. The voice, the voice, the voice. The voice of God is powerful, Psalm 29 said. Stronger than waters, stronger than death, stronger than anything. Just phenomenal. And we need to understand this, that God can use someone. But you know, I'm amazed at the call of God. And I want to say again, obedience is better than sacrifice. Sacrifice, you're trying to make up for something. You're trying to repent. Or you're trying to appease God when you were really not really doing what he wanted you to be doing. And that's sad. You know? God wants us to be obedient. I want to say to you, if he wants you to be on the mission field, you need to be there. If, he, if he's called you as, a, as, as a, a voice of his, you need to be doing that. I'm doing that, obviously. You need to be doing what he has ordained you to do. Now, I'm reminded of another place where I went to speak. A town called Gong. N-G-O-N-G. -N -G, Gong. That's how you pronounce it. The N is silent. Or kind of N. Gong. But Gong, you know. Kind of with a little... G with a little bit of flavor on the front. And this is little town outside of Nairobi, past Karen, you know, a little bit there. And, you know, the, the one side of Karen. And the roads, are, the road's pretty bad, not very developed, kind of, you know, not much there, really, honestly. I, what I saw of it, I was like, oh, boy, this is... This is pitiful. The road is so bad. There's big holes in the road. You drive there, you look around, you see a few uh, structures, and there's just not much there at all to, you know, <laughs> nothing to write home about, so to speak. So I'm there Sunday, Sunday morning, at a great church with a good bishop friend of mine. And the Lord has me prophesy over Gong, that it would become like a mini business center. And the roads will be developed. Here it is again, specific. Now, this is on video. I can get you the clip on this. We will, I will be releasing clips of certain prophecies and then the fulfillment reports of how they've happened. You know, it's one thing to say something and hope for it to happen. It's another thing when you say something and the miracle happens right away. You know what happened? That was on a Sunday morning, the next week. Within just a few days, the deputy president was, was uh, scheduled. To, he went there, and I wouldn't know if it was uh, scheduled ahead of time or he just decided to go. You know, who knows? By the way, when the government's doing something, especially in an African nation, you know, in any nation, really, that, that, that nothing gets leaked before a government movement is done doesn't get leaked. There's no like, you know, people are going to know in advance what, you know, what action is going to be taken. It's very hush hush. And they come when they're going to do something and they just do it. And then you, then that, then you find out about it. Sunday morning, I prophesied Gong would be developed and the roads would be built there, would be improved and all that. New roads built and all that. The next week, the deputy president of Kenya goes there, has, has some kind of a meeting or some speech that he did there, and talked about the institution of new roads, new, I don't know, new uh, development of something. And they called me to tell me, it was just a few days after that prophecy, that the Lord used 
by his own voice through his, through his vessel, myself. And whew, it began to happen. Father, to you be all the praise, all the glory, all the honor forever and ever and ever. Thank you for your creative fire. Because, you know, man doesn't have the power to heal anybody, to do anybody any, any good. You know, it's not, it wouldn't be right for someone to say, you know, in the meeting, I'm going to heal people. Well, if, you're, if you have the power to heal someone in and of yourself, then help yourself. Let's see. But it doesn't come from uh, direct from a man. It comes by the spirit of God. But he does use people. Please understand that. He's doing it, but he does do it through the ministries that he's ordained. Very powerful thing, the call of God and the call to ministry. So, which takes me to another event. Last Sunday, September 20... I don't have my calendar here. Whatever the day was. Let me find it. Just give me a half. Here we go. Calendar... Last Sunday was the 29th, and that is one, two, three, four days ago, September 29th, on a Sunday, Sunday morning, uh, I was invited to a, a beautiful, great church. The place was packed with people, and the video is coming out tomorrow. You'll be able to see it. Stay tuned for that. And uh, and it's where the president's uh, first president's home is, Jomo Kenyatta. It was his own private home, and people told me that when he was the president, the first president, the founding president of Kenya, he didn't really stay in the state house in Nairobi very often. He always liked to go to his house in Gatundu South, which is about. I guess a 40-minute drive from uh, where, the, where the other state house is now, in Nairobi proper, and near, the, near the, the capital city, the city center, near there. And uh, so we were right near there, and it turns out, unbeknownst to me, I'm going there to preach, I'm invited, very excited about uh, being on the way there with some friends in the government and wonderful. And the Lord and uh, some other people and our, our team and crew, our video uh, people and drivers and what. The Lord had me prophesy. And I said, there's going to be a miracle here in law enforcement. The video is coming out tomorrow. You'll see it. And we're going to also make the highlights clip. And some other things about that. because, and, and I was told later that people were very concerned about insecurity in the area in Kiambu County uh, outside uh, of Nairobi where the president's back, they call it the president's backyard, which because the president's home is there, which is, functions kind of as another state house, although uh, the, the current president, Uhuru Kenyatta, really is in the state house in the city. And he has another home also, which is uh, the next property over. So there's really nobody out there. But, but in, the, in the area, they thought this is where the first president lived. And now there's this insecurity. And some murders begin to happen. Some violence begin to happen. Some horrific things. And I heard even the night before I arrived there on Sunday morning. You talk about timing. So people were killed, uh, horrifically murdered, on the Saturday night, the very night before I was on my way to speak in this church in this town of Gatundu South, which everyone who's Kenyan, the world, knows that place. It's the home of the first president, the president's home, the president's uh, residence. It's a famous place, to say the least. So... I get there, and I heard, I heard the thing. Somebody just mentioned it to me as we were about to go in, and the Lord spoke to me. They just said about there's some violence going on here. That's all, you know, they said there was something that happened last night. And I said, really? Wow. Last night? They said, yes. And I said, um, I didn't say anything. 
But during the meeting as I was speaking, I was speaking about prophecies over Kenya. It wasn't a teaching, but healing, a healing wave of God's glory began to flow. It was really a prophetic, a prophetic time in, in that service. It was very uh, a, unique, a unique thing happening. The Lord had me prophesy the violence would be stopped. And I said after that, out of, the, out of my mouth came these words. I said, the Lord says that he's going to cause a miracle to happen in law enforcement here in Gatundu South. There's going to be a miracle in law enforcement. Listen to me now. This is, this is amazing. Uh, a, 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 a man from the government called me, a dear friend, called me the next day. And he told me, he said, Prophet, you're going to be amazed to hear this. It's in the news today that the government made a move on Katundu South. Today, this is less than 24 hours after the prophecy. The prophecy was Sunday morning, midday. Next day, Monday, around the same time, or morning hours maybe, uh, instituting it. Be yeah, before 24 hours passed, the government went and replaced all the police officers, transferred them out, sacked them, put them, you know, into other places. And the head of something, I don't know all the details how to describe it, a government minister, yeah, who's, uh, you know, in charge of some of these things, came on the news and said, it's our job to be awake at night as civil servants and the police to make sure the Wananchi, which means Wananchi means the common man, the, the people of the soil, you know, the, the people, the citizens here, the citizens, that's a good way to put it, can sleep well and be safe. And we're going to make sure that the right people are here and we're coming against combating this wave of violence and insecurity that's happened here in Campbell County, especially in the president's backyard, as they say, Gatundu South where I was. This was four days ago. Now listen, you can't anyway plan these things, know these things in advance, but the Spirit of God will use a voice of His to speak. And it is an amazing thing. I want to say that God has a plan for everybody in some way or another, a specific assignment, and your best duty is to get on in finding out where that is, how, what that is to be functioning in, and you be getting fully blown up into it. I mean, your life is committed to obeying the, the, the voice of the Lord and doing exactly what it is He wants you to be doing. The voice. There's so many other things that have happened. People used to tell me from 2002, was it 2002? Yes. Yeah, 2002. The prophecies that God had me deliver about Mwai Kibaki being elected the president, it went viral. It, there was no social media back then. It was all by email. And people printed them, got the emails, printed them, copied them, and like was like, Voluminous. I mean, I got four million hits on my website over one prophecy that we delivered to Kenya. Four million hits on my website over one prophecy. That's I would say that's viral. And you know, these things were not. And I had a tape once. I don't think we have it. We we it was lost in the shuffle. You know, uh, some years ago. But the 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 people began to tell me about the dairy industry. The, this industry, industries that were dead, different industries that got revived, brought back to life under Mwai, under Mwai Kibaki. Things had changed. The city began to be developed. I mean, just things began to happen through the country. All the movements and industries. And the Lord spoke to me and said, I'm going to bow down from heaven and kiss Kenya because I love Kenya. I love the people. I love the land. I have a great plan. But, you know, there's a lot of evil that goes on in the nation that needs to be stopped. And the Lord is also attacking that and combating that. I want to say something. If you're an evildoer, a liar, a thief, a con artist, a, a, a corrupt person that hurts innocent people, 
lives to take advantage of people and steals from people, the curse of God will be upon such a person. I pray that, you know, not, not you that are watching are good people, I would imagine. For the, for the highest percentile of, of people watching, you know, you don't do those things. But there are people even that say, praise the Lord, like they're, like they're Christians in church, and then they steal, they cheat, they lie, they live debaucherous, filthy lives, they, they do all kinds of things, they, they'll, they'll, they'll you, you just be shocked, you know? And you know how an innocent person can be taken by some of these fools? Is because you just, you just, you're, you're innocent, you're pure, you just can't imagine someone could be that evil and smile in your face and act like they're with you, and then really be devising to try to destroy, steal everything they can and all of that. And this, the, these things really happen. I mean, these things go on. Look at this uh, tycoon from Netherlands, a Jewish man, Cohen, that was just brutally murdered and buried in, in his septic tank, in his own property, multi-million dollar estate. And they're trying to figure out now who did it. And of course, the wife is the chief suspect and she's denying it and try to fight it back in her own way, saying it wasn't her. And, but somebody it happened on his own property and she was there. So you know what I mean? It'll, I hope the truth will really uh, prevail in the end. But of course, you know, this is Kenya. So all these things that go on. But uh, behind the scenes, some people just think they have impunity. You know, they steal money. They do corrupt things. They go and pay the powers that be. They pay the police. They pay the uh, anybody, you know, the judicial system. They just try to... And it's not even their money they're giving. They're not givers. They're, they stole it anyway. So they just have to give back some of it or else they're going to get fried, you know. So, uh, but I want to prophesy again. You know me. My name is Thomas Manton IV. I'm God's prophet. You know that. You know me. I want to say, tell you again, thus saith the Lord. And this is me. And I haven't heard anybody say this, but I'm saying it. By the Spirit of the Lord. That the day will come in Kenya when some of these people will not be able to get out of what they've done and they will go the full scale of justice and justice will be served and they will be punished and the, the nation will gasp in awe and horror and shock to see that some people did not have impunity. I prophesied this years ago that the days of impunity are ending and there's coming a day when righteousness and integrity is really going to lift up and exalt the nation. I prayed a prayer over Gatundu. Kabra Shaketolaba. I feel the anointing falling here right now. I, pray, I prayed a prayer uh, uh, prophetically, and you're, go, you're going to see it from tomorrow the next day when we release it. It'll be available online. You'll be able to see the whole thing. And the Lord said to me a funny thing. He said, if people just would be righteous and integritous, he said, I could bless them with business. I could bless them in ways. They don't have to steal. If you think you have to steal, instead of really worshiping God, I feel the anointing here. You know, I have, there's an anointing upon my life too. Let me tell you some good news here. For people to prosper. I've been talking about that. The Lord spoke to me last week again, and he told me to prophesy. He said, tell the people, tell my people around the world, this is a season of economy of economic advancement, economic uplift, economic breakthrough, financial increase, business increase, ministry increase, project increase, financial increase, abundance of blessings, territorial breakthroughs, ownership of real estate, business, business, commerce, money, money, money flowing. And it's going to happen in the nation of Kenya. It's going to happen all over East Africa and up. All of Africa and over the whole entire world. We're going to see God begin to fulfill his promise to us. He said, I am the God who gives you power to get wealth. I am the God who gives you power to increase. I am the God Jehovah who blessed Abraham of old. Last Sunday I did a teaching in the afternoon after the morning service. In Gatundu South, we did one in the city, uh, in the capital city. And <coughs> the Lord said, he said to me just a few moments before I was going, I said, okay, I poured out today. We, it's like we had five services in one in the morning. We had a, another meeting upstairs. You'll see this on video. It's coming out. I'm making six different video uh, segments, six different ones, six, six different ones from one service. 
dear friend of mine was attacked with cancer and he was healed. I prayed for him over the phone while I was not, uh, when I was in another country, I prayed for him. And the Lord had me say to him, I said, you're not done. You're not going to die. No, I'm not letting you go. I said, you, you, we, have, we have things to do together that we haven't done yet. You know that. And I, he had, he had, he just would bring tears to your eyes the way he said it to me, because I, I hardly remembered how I said it. He said, he said, but prophet, you said to me, and he said this over the microphone, he's testifying in the church. He said, I said, on the phone, wait for me. I told him, me talking to him on the phone. And he's got this terrible cancer problem, which t took out any other, killed everybody that had had it. But not him. He's healed now. Ooh. And uh, he said, I, he said, I told him, wait for me, I'm coming. We have things to do together. You will not die, but you will live for the glory of God. Today, I was with him today, again. He's on the job, he's out, he's doing stuff. He's a high, very high level person. He's healed. And he's about the father's business. And he also does a lot of high uh, things in, you know, another arena. And... Uh, Great guy, great man. That's one segment, his testimony. And then the message I delivered. And then another message was delivered there. And then for, through the pastor. Uh, great, great, great sermon he gave. Great word. And that's recorded. And then also upstairs I did another exhortation prophetically about financial increase. That was done from the office upstairs privately, but that's going to be released publicly on video. And then, then some testimonies from these great men, some from the government, two government leaders and another uh, elder in the church uh, who had been in, our, in my meetings years ago and was testifying about things I had said, one of them being that the day will come in Kenya when corruption will be a thing of the past. I was like, whoa, this is powerful. And the Lord spoke to me the day before. He says, when you're going... Bring all the cameras and make sure uh, you, you, you guys are ready because I, uh, after the meeting, I saw it in a vision. I, there's some things I want said privately to the camera and that we can release later that uh, the, big, the big crowd in the church didn't hear. We did that privately in the office. Now, this is amazing. So after that, um, in the city, God had me deliver this word. Here's what he said. He said, uh, uh, Abraham and Job and David and Solomon were billionaires, USD billion, US dollar billionaires, in, in that amount of wealth. In fact, many billions. <sighs> Somebody tried to estimate Abraham's wealth, and this was some years ago, so it would be worth more. So I'd say I'd add another hundred to it now with the. Uh, Rise of, 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 of uh, eva you know, valuation. Said Abraham could have been worth as much as 200 billion, billion U.S. dollars. Job had camels, 3,000 that he lost, and then God gave him double. So now he had 6,000 camels. And there was an auction in Saudi Arabia where camels were selling between like 1.7 million to 2.7 million and this was maybe the 2.7 with the double humped, really prized camels. Camels were the, also the premier uh, transportation of the day. They didn't have planes, trains, and automobiles, and lorries, and boats, and all that sh big ships back then. Uh, you know, doing intercontinental, you know, cargo transports and all that. It was the camels that carried things across the desert in that part of the world. And Job was the richest man in the East. And then he lost, but then God gave him back double. Now he had he lost six three thousand camels. Now he had six thousand camels, and the, and let's say you took a low number. I think the lowest one sold in this auction, in Saudi Arabia, of these special camels were like one point three million dollars. I thought, okay, take the lower version. One point three million dollars times six thousand. You're not ready for this. Drum roll, please. Is nine point nine billion U.S. dollars. Even if you're way off on the calculation and played with a few zeros either way, that's still too much wealth to argue with. Almost $10 billion, if it be possible, 
that were just his camels. Think about it. And again, if the calculation, you say, well, maybe it wasn't uh, sold for that much. Those were, there were many different kind of camels. Okay, so knock a few zeros off. Where you at? You're still multi, 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 center, center millions into the baby, the billions. Anyway, for just one commodity that he had. And he had others. So look at Solomon, multi-billionaire. Look at David, took the spoils of the gold and the billions of dollars. You, if this seems uh, amazing to you, read the Bible. Read uh, 1 Kings chapter 10, verse 4, I think it is, somewhere in there. If, or is it, was it 3 or 4? I, can't, I, don't have the, I don't have the address of the scripture right now, but we'll find it. But it says, it says there, in one year's time, almost $3.83 billion, almost $4 billion of gold was laid at Solomon's feet in one year's time. That was Solomon. Look at Abraham. They say he could have been worth as much as $200 billion. That's, two, that's three times the wealth of Bill Gates and Warren Buffett, the richest men, they say, and then Bezos now, Amazon. Uh, that, that double his almost. Hey, this is a, this was the father Abraham, man of God. So please, the Lord said to me, said, I want you to begin to study again the lives of these men. And I want you to begin to think like them. And I want you to be able to believe, believe me to see exploits like that in your life and in the lives of other people. So I have very good news for you, my friend. I want to tell you, if you're in business, I'm going to pray for you. I want you to write me, especially people from Kenya and from all over the world. Please, it's not, it's, um, I know I'm talking about Kenya a lot here. And miracles in Kenya, prophetic uh, miracles in Kenya, prophecies for over, over the nation of Kenya. But this is applicable to you wherever you are. My God, Father, I, I'm going to wrap this now, but I want to pick this up another time. But I, I continue, but the Lord, there's so many other things to say. But the Lord says, I want to use a voice and I want to bless my people. And you are that voice, my son. And I'm going to use you to, to, see, to, to prophesy blessings and miracles over people. And I'm going to do it for you right now. Father, financial increase, breakthrough, new jobs, new opportunities, new friends, favor, even from unexpected sources, as you said in Isaiah 45, 2 and 3. Hidden riches, treasures, even in, uh, from secret places. Uh, unknown sir you spoke prophetically also lord that there was a a movement coming uh where money would flow like water limitlessly it wouldn't be like people say well there's no money in the economy no money in the country no money in the coffers no money in the system and there's always lack and there's always deficit and he said no you're just going to be business on that level and i want to say this it's for the people of God to be blessed, not just for uh, the devil's people and sinners to have industries. So you as a child of God need to create your own economy. <laughs> That's, That's profound. I got to say that loud. You as a child of the living God, son or daughter, whichever the gender you are, you need to create your own economy under the hand of God by the creative power of God. Because when you're wealthy, you have many more options to do many more things. God wants to expand his kingdom. He wants, he wants you to understand also that poverty is a curse. It's, a, it's the work of the devil. It's not the work of God. God never made any man poor except the fact that it might have been a punishment for breaking the laws of God. It's, a, it's really a curse that came when the hand of God got off of somebody because they're just so messed up. But for it to be a culture and a system, then you have the devil system operating. If you're in, thinking in an impoverished way or acting in an impoverished way. Really, the plan of God is prosperity and wealth. Healing and health. Deliverance. Peace of mind. And you, my friend, need to be walking in those blessings. So, I want to decree that over your life. That lack fear, bondage, intimidation, all kinds of nonsense, all kinds of wrong, all kinds of victimization, all kinds of lack and 
stress and all kinds of anguish and despair, all those are now going to become a thing of the past in your life. You believe I'm God's prophet, you can say amen to that and receive that in Jesus' name. The nations of the earth are being transformed by the voice of the Lord. The voice of the Lord that transforms millions of lives in nations of the world, even into the billions, can it be so? In Jesus' name, yes, of course it can. God said to Ezekiel in 37 chapter, can these bones in this wasteland live? Jeremiah said, I don't know. Too hard of a question for me to answer. He says, Lord, you know. And God said, you, son of man, prophesy. And these bones will live again. And the army will rise up again. Things that were wasted will become now a place of oasis and flourishing and habitation. Uh, places that were ruins of desolations of even of many generations, as it said in Isaiah 61. You'll be the repairer of those things. You'll be the one that will cause them to come back. And for your shame, you'll have double. For your trouble, you'll have double. And my blessings will be upon you, says the Lord. Isaiah 60, I said, Arise and shine, for your light's come, and the glory of the Lord's risen upon you. The gross darkness covers the earth. My light will be seen upon you, and I will bless you. Even the wealth of the Gentiles will come to you. Proverbs 13.22 talks about the wealth of the wicked coming into the hands of the righteous. Proverbs 10.22 talks about the blessing of the Lord will make a person rich with no sorrow and trouble added to it. And that is the will of God for you and me. Deuteronomy 8.18, again, I am the Lord your God who, teach, who will uh, cause you to create wealth, to receive it, to make, manage, and multiply money. Make, manage, and multiply money. I'll give you the power to receive it and to make it and to manage it and to multiply it for my glory. And of course, Isaiah 48, 17. He said, I am the Lord your God who teaches you to profit through the prophet, the teachings of, uh, through the prophet now also. I like that. P-R-O-P-H-E-T causes P-R-O-F-I-T. Know that. I am the Lord your God who will teach you to profit and lead you in the way you should go. Wow. I'm Thomas Manton IV, and I say you are blessed with the kiss of heaven, with the kiss of Jehovah himself. Thank you for being my partner. You can do that on thomasmanton.com. People of Kenya all over the world, and in Kenya, you could use the M-Pesa 0792-320-780. Sow a seed into this word that I've just, that Lord just had me speak to you, that I've just declared about your financial and economic increase, breakthrough, and advancement. And watch the miracles begin to flow. I'm going to pray the harvest for you. You can do also by card on thomasmanton.com. You could also use paypal.me forward sign dr Thomas Manton. Cash app is a cash app's become a popular thing. I don't know in all the nations if it is. But you can use that by, I think, by debit card or checking account. There's no fee. If you use a debit card, not another credit card, it's just zero free on either end. The money just goes without fee, which is great. Cash app, the, my cash app handle is dollar sign dr thomas manton. And you can sow seed there. I, I, I'm talking to people right now. You may, you know, this will be forwarded. This will go out there. And you, you've not seen me in a while or you've heard of me or, or in our ministry the great way God's used us over the years, uh, prophetically, and, and maybe people that are, you know, new of us or, or just coming to know us, and you've not sown anything. You've not helped the missions project. You've not, uh, you know, and really, your gift is not just to help something. It's to, it's to bless yourself. When you give, you're making a transaction with God. You're doing business with God for yourself. 
So this is the opportunity. There's always a channel. If you want to send a check, you can't write a check to P.O. Box, you know, 777 Hallelujah Boulevard, Heaven's Way, uh, Heaven, and mail it. How's it going to get there? No, there's ministries on the earth that are, that are filled with God's anointing. And that's the place to plant your seed, to give your tithes, pay your tithes and plant your seed and give offerings and donations to help the work of God. But you know what? You're, you're, you're touching the anointing and making a transaction with heaven. For your ministry, pastor, listen to me. For your business, business person, man or woman, listen to me. Businesswoman, businessman, uh, person that works in, as a civil servant. You want to see what I've said about corruption being broken and all that. Sow a seed that God will also anoint and empower you because it's a transaction. Also, there's increase in your finances and just it causes heaven to smile upon you. Let me tell you a testimony. Now, I, I know what I'm talking about. And I say this boldly without pretense or, or, or apprehension in any way. Because it's the word of God, it's the will of God for us to tithe, to give, to sow, to plant, that we may reap. I was asking God for some things early in the morning, early this morning. I woke up, I was praying, and I was, I feel this power, I feel the power of heaven right now. Release it. Fire upon you, my friend, for breakthrough. It's happening. Whew. Man, I'm, I'm on fire here. Lord Jesus. And, and I was praying some very, very grandiose things. I mean, I was stepping into a realm. Because, you know, when you, when you get out of the familiar and you go into the unfamiliar and you go to the place in the call of God, you, it's just you and him. You know, you just, you, you get turned inside out. The anointing comes upon you. The assignment that's working in you begins to just get stronger. And you're not just you and your daily life in some little place and, you know, where you're living or being or whatever. But you're out there under the hand of God, on the mission field, man, as a revivalist and a reformer. I mean, it's different than just being uh, in one environment, home, where you're just doing. And some people, God's going to geographically relocate them. He's going he's to relocate some relationships. He's going to change some things. We're just going to free people up that they can really fulfill his call and his will and be where he wants them to be and for you to be where he wants you to be and doing what he wants you to do. And I was, I got into a realm, I was asking God for some big stuff. I won't tell you all what, I mean big, I mean beyond, I mean I don't, I, have, I, rem, I don't remember saying some of those, they were just coming to me by the Spirit. And the Lord said to me, yeah, I hear you, Thomas. I'll give them to you. And then he reminded me. He said, one thing you need to do is you need to send that, that offering. That I've been talking to you about. That you set aside to give. Get it sown. Do it. I thought, yeah, I see it. So by me planting... I'm going to reap even in the prayers that I've been praying. You know, some people are struggling and they're really destitute. And many people even watching, I know you're, you're hearing this or you see, you're, you're in a place where you have a lot, of, a lot of debt, a lot of strain, a lot of lack, a lot of pressure, a lot of, you know, just turmoil. But you know what? It's because you, I think it's because part of it is because you haven't given enough. You can't just live to take and never give. You got to be generous. I had a young man come and he was looking for some computers, to, you know, and he took his time and to do that. And I, you know, he's looking for to work for us and all that. I, I know, and, and it may work out that way, but I'm kind of weighing it out. But uh, I thought, no, call him back here. He was on another shop. I said. Call him to come and see me because I have to give him something. Because that's my thing. I mean, he was, he was helping me. I got to give. You know, some people don't do that. They just take, 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 opportune, opportune, or they steal, or they, or they just don't, they don't appreciate. And, and by that, they're not sowing. And then the generosity of God won't come back to a life. I'm speaking something. This is very powerful. I'm hitting a real nerve here, a real 
into the bone marrow here, right into the heart, into, right into the bone of the thing, you know, because of people's lives, because you need to give. You need to be a giver if you want to be a good liver. You want to have a good life? you got to begin to give and give and give and make sure you're tithing. You know, I have people that are members of our ministry. Listen here. They, I'm their pastor. I'm their shepherd. Yes, I am. I'm glad about it. And they're tithing. And they need to. And they, they, God reminds them. Everywhere I go, even the church I was at last this past Sunday morning in Gatundu, uh, the, the Lord had me tell the pastors that God is going to visit people in this church. He's going to convict them and show them they need to become tithers. They need to be doing more for the house of God. And their finances will, it will let me tell you, from now will instantly shoot up. You in business, you connect with me and you sow seed. Watch. Miracles are going to begin to happen for you financially. You're going to see it. And that is my explanation by the will of God and the word of the Lord to you right now. So the Holy Ghost had me say all that. You need to sow. You need to give. You need to. We don't need that from anyone. We're, I'm blessed. We need you to see you prosper. Who's we? Me and God. Want to see you prosper. I'll rejoice when I hear the miracles happening for you. And when you plant into this anointing. Look out. Look out. And stretch yourself. Somebody might have gave something. Give again. Someone made, as I was saying, that people that have come upon this, you've never given anything. Or, or maybe you did. Or maybe you got, you know. But it's time to plant something into this anointing. Do it in Jesus' name. ThomasManton.com and Pesa 0792-320-780. PayPal.me forward sign DR Thomas Manton. Cash app dollar sign DR for Dr. Thomas Manton. Website everywhere it works in the world www.thomasmanton.com. Calm. Praise God. You know, the Lord had me say all that. I wasn't planning that at all. I didn't come on here to do any of that, but to deliver what some testimonies of prophecies being, you know, being spoken by the voice of the Lord that transformed nations and the fulfillments thereof. I'm just excited about this. And the Lord bless you. Keep you today, make his face to shine upon you, grant you his favor, show you his peace, show you his love, show you his glory, and show you his blessings. Let it be so in Jesus' name. Waiting to hear from you. And I want everybody to private inbox me also, especially in the nation of Kenya that I can. And please, when you do, put your phone number and your email in there. Will you do that for me? Put your phone, your mobile number, and your email. Just do that. And we can communicate with what God is saying right now, afresh and anew, to the nation of Kenya. I have hot invitations right now also to Liberia, to Ghana, to Nigeria, to um, South Africa, and some other great countries uh, on the African continent. Several others, I know a few of them slip in my mind. Some others are, are also in the works. Uganda and some of the other East African countries as well as West and North and South. Uh, also, a great mission, something we're going to be doing in Europe soon, and also, of course, America. And my spirit is also seeing, I'm also seeing the, the Asian world, uh, Southeast Asia, the, the Orient, the Far East. Some great things in that part of the world are going to develop and of course, America to be shaken by the power of God, Africa to be shaken by the power of God, Europe to be shaken by the power of God, the Asian world, the Orient, the Far East to be shaken by the power of God, the Middle East, my God, to be shaken by the power of God. And we need to reach out more in television and media. I received a prophetic word that was so great, so many that I received uh, even recently, but one comes to mind, where this, pro this great prophetic minister said to me, 
uh, long, lengthy word with many details. But part of it was, he said, they said, uh, a prophet, you, you're going to minister and mentor people all over the planet through media. And some you'll never meet, but they'll be greatly influenced and transformed through your ministry, through the teachings and things that you're going to deliver uh, through the media. I was like, my God, that is, that is right on it. And uh, we're, we're, we're expanding in media more and more and more. So thank you for supporting the work here. Thank you for being a partner. Thank you for being connected. And you can become a monthly partner and a friend to the ministry that way. And also be praying for us and with us. And I am praying and declaring over you the breakthrough that you've been waiting for is literally beginning a fresh and anew in a new way and in, in a higher, greater dimension from this moment right now in Jesus' name. I am Thomas Matthew the Fourth. Love you much. Looking to hear from you. I'm praying for you. Again, the words of Isaiah 48, 17. I am the Lord your God who will teach you to profit and lead you in the way you should go. And I declare over you success and increase and all of the despair and stress and lack and poverty and problems you've had. God's going to speak to you and show you ways and give you brilliant wisdom and strategies and ideas and instructions on what to do to unravel yourself from those kind of problems and getting to where the blessings of heaven are flowing like free flow waterfalls over your life. In Jesus' name. Love you much. I bless you in Jesus' name. Talk to you again real soon. Love you much.